Hey guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Um, we're looking at gas exchange in humans today, and that happens to be the 11th topic of the syllabus. Now, it's, it's quite a big topic, so I will try to get through it as fast as possible. So, I hope you guys have a basic understanding of what is respiration is. It's basically a chemical reaction in cells that produces energy. Now, we've got two different types. We've got aerobic respiration, which is respiration with oxygen, and anaerobic respiration, with, is, which is uh, without oxygen. Um, what we're mostly concerned about is uh, this one here, aerobic respiration, where you've got glucose plus oxygen giving us water, carbon dioxide, and energy. For those of you that are, um, that are undertaking the core syllabus only, then you only need to know the worded equations, but for everyone else, you need to know both the worded and the actual chemical reactions involved. Um, now, uh, I won't go into too much detail about what anaerobic respiration is, but basically it's um, this only happens when aerobic respiration can't happen, it's, uh, in, in the case of our bodies at least. So um, if somehow we don't have enough oxygen to support the cells that need, the, um, need to kind of respire because we're exercising a lot or whatnot, then in that case um, anaerobic respiration will kind of take place but otherwise aerobic respiration is what we're kind of mainly concerned about okay so this is basically a diagram of our respiratory system we've got the larynx um, so our mouths are here it goes down uh, the respiratory tract here the air ways of our bodies larynx otherwise known as the voice box you've got the trachea which has cartilage um, uh, cartilage texture of their surroundings for support uh, to not crumble under the pressure differences of the atmosphere or the environment um, and our bodies. Um, the, the trachea kind of branches off eventually into two bronchi for each uh, for each lung and the bronchi ev eventually kind of branch out even further getting to the point where it gets into these uh, tiny branches called bronchioles which finally uh, end up branching off into alveoli which are balloon-like structures where the gas exchange actually happens between um, carbon dioxide and oxygen because obviously we need oxygen to respire and the carbon dioxide we need to eliminate from our bodies because uh, essentially they're poisonous. So this is another diagram much more, uh, it's a lot more cartoonish but so we've got the epiglottis which is basically the flap around the larynx so you can see that this is basically uh, the larynx here this part here, it, branch, uh, it goes into the trachea, uh, branches off into bronchi, and yeah, so have a quick read of that. What you can ignore, you can ignore the pharynx and you can ignore the um, pleural membranes as well because those aren't part of your course. Everything else you probably need to know, and especially the diaphragm which is uh, the bottom part of your thorax. This whole thing is your thorax by the way and the intercoastal muscles which surround the lungs. And of course your ribs here, which plays a vital role in how we breathe. Uh, gas exchange surfaces. So we've got our alveoles here. Um, as I said, this is where the exchange happens. So it's surrounded by a lot of blood vessels. Um, and we'll see how this surface is good for the gas exchange. So uh, first of all, it has, it has a large area um, for this exchange to happen. You can see that in this diagram, you have a lot of these alveoles that are kind of situated in this region here and that shape especially gives a large surface area for diffusion to occur all this is happening via diffusion and as we've talked about before this uh, surface is very very thin to allow minimal distance for the travel of diffusion between the gases uh, it's got a very good blood supply around it obviously um, the gases are leaving and uh, entering the blood so you need to have a lot of blood supply or else it wouldn't really work because the gas will get nowhere without it being inside the blood. And good ventilation is also important because uh, the air is basically where we um, get the oxygen and where we excrete the carbon dioxide into. Okay, so all these four, um, four features are very important for the gas exchange um, in our bodies. So the composition of inspired versus expired air. Uh, first of all, nitrogen is unaffected. So basically we don't use nitrogen at all. Oxygen, you can see, is um, lower in expired air, meaning we take in oxygen 
and of course it's for respiration and carbon dioxide we release more than we inhale obviously because carbon dioxide is a waste product of um, respiration and water vapor can be variable because in humid days and whatnot it'll change but usually when we exhale our air it's uh water is quite saturated because of the evaporation that happens in our alveoles and stuff like that and you can actually investigate uh the carbon dioxide that is released when we breathe um by using lime water now lime water is calcium hydroxide um it's a solution of calcium hydroxide sorry and basically um lime water is clear in color but when you react with carbon dioxide it creates a milky white kind of product or um, chemical so basically blow into lime water through a straw or whatnot and um, eventually it will turn cloudy and that marks the presence of carbon dioxide that's being excreted from your body so if you want to make a um, uh, sorry if you want to see a demonstration video and play then um, I'll, I'll link you below and you can watch that now one of the most important parts of this topic is how we breathe in and how we breathe out now you need to understand this diagram here. It's very important. So you've got um, you've got the ribs here. Ribs play a vital role in this. Okay, we're gonna take a look at inspiration first. Now the red ribs, sorry, are connected by what we call external intercostal muscles, which is the outer portions, um, and the inner portions are controlled by internal intercostal muscles. But mainly we're looking at external because that's the most important, and also the diaphragm. Okay. So, what happens is the external intercostal muscles contract and that causes the ribs to move outwards um, and spread out more. And also, when we contract, uh, when we breathe in, sorry, the diaphragm also contracts and originally the diaphragm is actually a dome shape. So if you look at the uh, diagram on the right, this is how it originally is. But when we, when we contract the diaphragm, it goes downwards. Now, think about this. When these two muscles contract, the ribs spread out and up, and the diaphragm, which is the muscle at the bottom of the rib, kind of falls downwards. How does that change our uh, the volume of our thorax? Well, it increases the volume of our thorax because of the spreading of the ribs and the um, decrease in position of the diaphragm. Now, when we when we um, think about it. What that does is it causes the pressure in our bodies to decrease and it decreases below the atmospheric um, environmental pressure and therefore pressure um, cause, the pressure difference causes air to move from high pressure to low pressure and eventually air goes into our bodies. Um, oppositely, when we expire, the external intercostal muscles relax and the diaphragm relaxes so the diaphragm moves back into its dome-like position and the uh, ribs that were spread before kind of goes back into place um, and so it, um, the area or the volume inside, uh, inside our thorax decreases uh, to the point where it increases the pressure okay because they're um, the lower the volume the higher the pressure and vice versa and it increases the pressure in our thorax higher than the environmental atmospheric pressure um, and air is released outwards because it travels from high pressure to low pressure and if we wanted to forcefully excrete air even more out of our bodies then we use the internal intercoastal muscles which we contract and these internal intercoastal muscles are situated in the central region of our um, ribs and that even more decreases the uh, volume of our thorax and forces air uh, to go out even more than before so finally when we go through physical activity the rate of breathing increases and so does the depth so why does that happen well during exercise our cells obviously respire more rapidly and therefore carbon dioxide is being released uh, more rapidly as well and that level is detected by the brain and that brain well our brains are kind of make us increase our heart rate and the depth of our breathing as well not only to allow carbon dioxide to be excreted more rapidly but also to allow more oxygen to enter our bodies because our cells need them um, more in order to respire more as well so finally thank you for watching guys it was a long topic but hopefully it cleared up some of your um, confusions about the topic if anything more um, 
then comment below and then I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.